morning in Ottawa where MHA Pam Parsons happens to be. Hello, Pam. Good morning from Ottawa. How are you? Great. So you've been attending the Equal Voice Conference. How did it go? Well, you know, I, I a couple of months ago, <clears throat> excuse me, I received an invitation to come and to present here as a panelist for my work on the Privileges and Elections Committee and, of course, a member of the House of Assembly to represent our province and to come here and, and participate in this very important conference for Equal Voice nationally. So what kind of issues have been raised there? Uh, what uh, barriers still exist or what opportunities are there? Exactly. You said, I mean, you know, it's all, it's all about changing systemic barriers, systemic obstacles. Um, and, and really empowering systemic change for women in particular to get women involved in, pu- in public office at all levels of government. So, you know, many topics discussed, and I got to say, it was it was wonderful. It was so refreshing yesterday, you know, to see a, a, a large room full of women empowering and supporting women. Our own Goody Hutchings, uh, MP Goody, was here on behalf of her minister as well, and spoke uh, at, the, at the conference. And many many uh, elected officials across our province, women hearing their stories. And, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. And it felt so great, you know, to be there and to keep this conversation going. Because, Linda, as you know, I mean, you're a woman in a leadership role in the media as well. I mean, we, we've, we've, come, we've come so far, but there's still so, so much work to do. And ultimately, women have to support each other. So what kind of barriers have been discussed there? Uh, what uh, do women see as uh, impediments to getting involved in politics? And let's be clear, not all women want to be involved in politics. You know, not all, exactly. I mean, not all women, and, or not all men for that matter. I mean, because you know, to get involved with politics, as you mentioned earlier, to, you referenced your conversations with Ryan Cleary. I mean, you know, you do, your, your life becomes very public and you're subject to a lot of scrutiny um, there's a lot of great support out there but as mentioned you know you face a lot of uh, negativity as well and it's not easy and I mean it, it affects your family members as well so I mean you've really got to have that passion and that I guess that desire you know to become involved in this work in the first place for me personally it's something I dreamed about as a child you know, and and I don't know where I get it because my parents are not political, and they've said to me, we, you know, where, where did we get you? Where, you know, because they're not political, and I mean, but it's just a dream that I've always had, and I've I've always followed. Uh, you know, I guess I was just born with that the courage and audacity in that regard. But um, I'm grateful for, for getting involved. I think we need people to get involved. And, and if we want to see change, I mean, as we know, we have we have an old system, our Westminster system. Uh, and But if we want to see change, like, for example, better support for child care. I mean, many women, that's something that they that they weigh. I mean, especially people who are planning, women who are planning to have a family. And that's something that they face questions on all the time. I mean, for example... You know, if a man's running for politics, you know, he doesn't often get the question, when do you plan on having children? I heard a, a young MLA from Alberta yesterday talked about that's a lot what the media focused on with her is when are you planning on, on having children? You know, I mean, it's just, you know, we do face those differences. And uh, but again, it's, it's groups like this and conferences like this, you know, the coming together, brainstorming, having these conversations. And that's that's how we're going to get change. So overall, a positive experience? Very positive experience, and it's great, as I said, to meet with women um, from all across our country. I also had a great opportunity to meet with our uh, Newfoundland Labrador MPs, of course. Uh, myself, we went had a had a supper meeting the night prior. MP Ken McDonald, um, MP Yvonne Jones, and Terence Rogers, and Goody Hutchings as well. Um, and you know, to discuss the priorities they're, they're facing our province, Newfoundland and Labrador, as we know. It's our most challenging time fiscally, and, you know, there's never a dull moment in our politics, as we can see what's happening right now. I mean, there's change is the gain upon us, and, uh, but ultimately, it, now more than ever, we all have to come together. We all have to work together, and every MHA, there's 40 MHAs, nine of which are women, um, but, you know, everyone has, has been elected on behalf of the people. Who, you know, who put them there. And we're all there to work together on behalf of the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. And, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly tough times, but I, for one, and I know many and all elected officials in our province are committed to doing that work on behalf. And there's lots of work to be done, as you know. When I was talking to uh, Keith and Ryan yesterday, you know, they admitted there's, uh, there's challenges and it can be tough. Uh, it, sometimes it's thankless. But in the end, they both agreed that uh, political life is very rewarding. Do you find that to be the case? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what? I wouldn't trade anything to be to, for, for where I am right now. 
Um, I, you know, as I said, this is a goal that I had in my heart and in my soul since I was a child. Um, you know, and as and, and as I continued on my path of journalism prior, and then moving into politics. So yes, absolutely. I mean, again, like I said, it's we are certainly for, facing a lot of challenges, but I am here for the long haul. I'm here to do what I can. Um, you know, I went away to school in, in Nova Scotia, and I also did some work in Ontario as a journalist. But I came back here because this is where I want to be. And, you know, I, I wouldn't trade anything in the world to be where we are. And I will say, yesterday after my presentation, and I'm, a lot of people made a point to come up to me and talk about the great experiences they've had when they visited our province uh, and, and dealing with our people. So, you know what? That speaks volumes. That wherever we go, we're known for, you know, the kind of people we are, the hard workers we are. Uh, MLAs from Alberta talked about how so many people from Newfoundland and Labrador now living in Alberta and how, you know, the, the quality hard workers that they are. So lots of great positive. You know, we're on the map. We're known for, for the special people we are, our diligence. And, you know, that speaks volumes to me. I'm very proud of it. And like I said, you know, I wouldn't trade where I am. I'm, I'm here for the long haul, and I'm certainly committed to the people of our province. Uh, Pam Parsons, thanks for your call this morning. Uh, safe travels. Thank you. I'm headed to the airport now, and it is really cold up here in Ottawa, and I'm hearing that it's freezing back home. Yeah, <laughs> so no, no no reprieve for you. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm looking forward to getting back home and uh, and getting back at it. And again, thanks for uh, taking the time to, to hear me at the great conference again at Equal Voice. Also, you mentioned Keith Hutchings. He was also a member of the Privileges and Elections Committee uh, that I was part of for us to bring in that new policy for a legislature harassment-free workplace policy. So uh, I want to commend him, I, I, you know, and he's uh, and, and congratulate him on a great career as well. And everybody who puts their name forward, they're to, they're to be commended. And uh, I'll leave it at that, and I'll uh, see you when we get back. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks, Linda. Take care. All righty.